we're going to run through a stability analysis with a root locus plot. Now, this uh, system that we're going to use, okay, now this could be any system that we're going to analyze, um, but let's just come up with some example numbers here. A gain of 0.1, a time constant of 50 seconds, and then uh, let's throw a time delay in here of 20 seconds as well. Okay, and so we have uh, this system that we want to design a controller for. So I'm going to put a, uh, a feedback control in here and put my controller here that's going to go off of the difference between the PV and the set point. In this case, I'm going to have a proportional only controller. So what I want to try to determine with this stability analysis is what is the range of KC values for which this controller is going to continue to be stable. Okay, so by stability I mean if I have a set point change, okay, this is my set point that, um, you know, so this might be my P only controller response with some offset there. Um, so that is stable, but as soon as I get a system that's going to grow in oscillation and, and continue to, to grow in those magnitude of the peaks, then it becomes unstable. Okay, um, and then we're also going to, when we plug in perhaps a negative value, that's going to come down to and steady off. Uh, but if it, you increase how negative it is, then it's going to be unstable. It's going to go to negative infinity if I plug in a negative gain there. Okay, so the first thing that I need for this analysis, uh, if I'm going to do a root locus plot, is that I can't use this uh, exponential. So I need to make an approximation for that. So I'm going to use um, a pod A approximation. And that is, uh, let me just write this in the, in the general form. If I have any um, theta P, then uh, you know, I could use a Taylor series approximation or others. Pod A works pretty well. Okay, so that's theta divided by 2 times S and then 1 plus theta divided by 2 times s. Okay, so this is my pod A approximation. So let's just go into MATLAB first of all and see how well this pod A approximation uh, works. Okay, so I'm just going to clear everything here. Uh, go back and create a new uh, continuous time transfer function s and then uh, build this uh, this 0 0.1 divided by 50, um, let me put some parentheses in there, 50 times s plus 1. Okay, so that's my base, uh, my base transfer function without the time delay. And if I do a step function, I'll see the uh, step response. Okay, so now let's go ahead and hold on to that and then do a step. Um, and we're going to do a, 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 the next one which is going to be with the, uh, let's just do this one with the time delay. Okay, so I have my time delay, and then we'll do a step on G1 as well. And so you can see the green line was just added with the 20 seconds of time delay. Now let's do ours with the pod A approximation as well. So that's going to be 1 minus, and then 20 divided by 2 times S, okay. So this is going to be 10, um, and then 1 plus 10 times s. OK, so there's our uh, continuous time transfer function. Um, and then if I do a step on G2, then it is the red line. OK, so that is approximating the uh, system with the time delay. And you can see it, it has a little bit of an inverse response here. OK, so that's part of the inaccuracy with the pod A approximation. But uh, we'll, we'll now be able to analyze G2 and see if the system G2 is uh, stable for which range of, of K values. Okay, so um, let's just, uh, if we do a root locus plot of G2, okay, actually I need to close. If you get that error, it just means you need to close this, or you can generate a new figure uh, 2, for example, a blank figure. And then if you do root locus, it'll put it onto figure two instead of figure one. Okay, so here's my here's my root locus plot. And the, the interesting thing with this root locus plot is that you can start tracing. Uh, you can drag these little markers along 
and see the gain of your controller. So if I have something, um, so let me just mark this up a little bit in, uh, okay, so I'll grab uh, this plot and go ahead and copy it back in here. Okay, let me just paste it and I'll explain just a little bit what's going on of what's going on with this plot. Okay, so this is this is a root locus plot and you have the imaginary axis on the y-axis and the real uh, number on, on this axis. So if I have something like negative 2 plus 3i, um, okay, so I'd go out to, actually I'd better do negative 0 0.2 uh, plus uh, 0 0.1i, um, okay. Um, then I would come out here to the, this is my real part, and then I would come here to my imaginary part, and that would be the location of my uh, pole, or my root of my denominator. Okay, and anything that is on this side of the plot, that means it's going to be uh, stable. Okay, and anything that is on the right-hand side is going to be uh, unstable. Okay, and anything that uh, does not have an imaginary part is that's on this line, that's going to not oscillate. Okay, but anything that has an imaginary part, they're always going to come in pairs. Okay, so if you see one here, you can put a mirror across uh, this and you're going to see another one uh, there on the other side. Okay, so we typically make X's are our poles. Okay, so you can see a little X here, a little X here, and this is our zero. So if any of the X's are on the right-hand side, then we're going to be unstable. But if all the X's are on the left-hand side, then we're going to be stable. Okay, the zeros, or the roots of the numerator, do not affect stability. Okay, so we can determine if we're going to oscillate. Okay, so this, these are going to oscillate if we have an imaginary part, okay, like here, or if we have a root that does not have an imaginary part, then that will not oscillate. So all it takes is um, one root, or I guess in this case a pair of roots um, that are in, that are either oscillating or unstable to make the whole system oscillate or be unstable. Okay, so it only takes one root to be on the right-hand side to make it unstable, and it only takes a pair of roots to be have an imaginary component to make it oscillate. Okay, so this is these x's are with a gain of zero, and then as I increase the gain of my controller, this is the solution of the roots of that closed-loop transfer function. And when I eventually get to 61 on my gain, or my KC value, then it says I'm going to be unstable. So at this point, it also tells me when I'm going to start to oscillate. Okay, so when my gain reaches that point. And you can see these two are coming toward each other as I increase the gain. And one root goes down, and one root goes up. And they'll actually cross here. Now I mentioned when they're imaginary, they always have a pair. So that will also be 61.1 for that root. It'll reach that point and that point. Okay, and then they come back over here and then they combine again and one is uh, gonna go this way and one is gonna go that way. Okay, so let's just, um, let's go ahead and go back to that plot and just um, see if we can also figure out what negative values of the gain are going to help us go are going to make us go unstable as well? So in order to do that, I need to come back into MATLAB, and if I just type help on R locus, um, you'll see that you can also plug in. Um, okay, you can also plug in a user specified gains instead of the computer. So that's an optional argument that we're putting in to our um, our system here. Okay, so if I do k equals 
And then let me just come up with some values that I want to look at for this. And I'll go from negative 10 to, let's say, 100. And uh, I'll do 10,000 points, OK, for that. The gains that I want to see, my KC values. Actually, let me make that KC. OK, so those are the KC values that I want to see. Now I want to also um, now go ahead and just do my root locus uh, with the uh, G2 transfer function and the KC. And uh, when I plot that, it's going to come up with a some new values here. OK, and actually tell me when I'm going to be going unstable with my KC. So let me get a new marker here. I just select one of the plots. And um, here's a gain of 0. Now one of the bugs in MATLAB is when you go this way, it won't say negative, even though uh, the gain is negative. OK, but at a gain of negative 10, that's when I'm going to go unstable. If I continue to make my gain more negative, then I would cross over into the right hand side of the plane and then I would be unstable. OK, so let me let me drag this back over and uh, at a gain of about 5, then I'm going to start to oscillate on my response, OK, on my closed loop response. And as we saw before, we are at about 60, OK? So I'm just going to leave that one there, and let me trace the green line as well. OK, so I start with a value of 0. OK, and when I get to a value of about 5, I start to oscillate, and then you can see with that, that pole, I'm going to get to a value of 60 as well, and that's when I cross over into the right-hand side of the plane, when my real number, this is the real axis uh, on the x, when that becomes positive for my uh, the real part of the root, then I'm going to be unstable. Okay, so let's just uh, test that out in, uh, in Simulink as well. So I'm going to um, just build a, a quick Simulink model. And let's just see if those that range from negative 10 to 60 is, is actually going to be the range that's going to cause this to, to go unstable. OK, so I have a, um, okay, a new Simulink model. And uh, I'm just going to drag a couple things over. The first one I'll just have as a step. Now, it doesn't matter what uh, size of step I use here. And if I hit Control Plus, then I'm going to make that um, larger, OK? And then I'm going to have my sum. Just go ahead and search for sum, drag it over, and, uh, and then I'll have a PID controller. Now, when you're doing stability analysis, you typically just want to leave off the, um, the constraints. You know, this is just kind of a theoretical analysis for the stability of your system. So don't put MV constraints or controller output constraints. Um, and then let's have a transfer uh, transfer function. OK, so that's going to be my um, system. And that one did not drag over. Let me try that one more time. OK, so there's my transfer function and then my delay as well. OK, so let's come up with a delay. And there's a transport delay. And then the final thing I'm going to need is a scope. OK, so I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller uh, so I can fit it all on here. And then a scope is going to allow me to observe the uh, system response. Um, but let me combine the set point and the um, output of this with a MUX. OK, so it's going to combine the two uh, signals. And uh, OK, so I have everything that I need. And I'll go ahead and just start linking this up. OK, make my feedback control system and my process, my delay, my response. And I'll put that to a, um, an output there. OK, just drag that over to make the arrows just a little bit smaller. I want to also show my, my step response. So I need to right click here um, when that little arrow comes up or the little circle comes up. OK. And that's going to allow me to drag it over here. And then I'm going to feedback. Um, okay, I've got to right click again here and feed that back. Now I need to change that, a couple things on these. One, I need to change this to a negative sign. 
okay because I'm going to be subtracting the PV from the, uh, the set point in the PV okay and then I come to my PID controller and uh, let me go ahead and just make this a proportional um, I'll, I'll put in a value of let's do 60 first of all and I'll put a 0 for my integral okay and then my transfer function I'm going to put that in as a 0 0.1 and then we had 50 times s plus 1 okay and then my delay let's have 20 seconds of delay okay so when we simulate that um, I probably need to go for just a little bit longer I'll go for 300 seconds in this case double click on the scope and you can see that it is unstable those oscillations are growing okay so let me uh, dial it down just a little bit more we'll go down to 50 for example and we did have an apod a approximation so um, and that's about the stability limit if you decrease this just a little bit more maybe 45 uh, you'll see that, that it'll probably be stable at that point okay so it's it's oscillating at about the same amplitude each time um, if you do need to make it a little less granular you can come in here and set the max step size for example to one simulate it again and it looks just a little bit uh, smoother okay so let's um, also dial in our negative 10 okay now this said it was okay when I dial this in it's not going to oscillate but it's going to be unstable because I have no imaginary parts for this you can see that it's going to continue to integrate uh, downward now if I put that in as maybe uh, 10,000 instead of 300 okay so it just continues to decrease and uh, let me decrease that even further so I'll go down to negative 15 and that should be unstable okay so you can see the purple line it went um, unstable but it did not oscillate okay so that concludes uh, this this brief tutorial with um, a stability analysis using a root locus plot um, don't forget the pot a approximation if you have an exponential function and then just use the r locus command in MATLAB uh, to be able to compute that